Hello friends, welcome to AI Flux. So last night, Apple released the brand new set of M3 Apple Silicon chips at their scary event, which in reality wasn't that scary, but we got a lot of cool information and a lot of exciting things came out. They also released new MacBooks and iMacs, but by far the biggest takeaway from this event is Apple has gone all in on AI. We haven't seen the M3 Ultra yet, but from what we can tell from the initial release of the M3, the M3 Pro, and the M3 Max especially, the M3 Ultra capabilities will be insane. And a lot of it has to do with AI. And like the new chips featured in the iPhone 15 and the new Apple Watch, there's a huge focus on AI. And this time we got a peek at some of the tooling both in software and hardware Apple is doing to make it clear, this is a forefront of their efforts with Apple Silicon. So Apple has been at the forefront of CPU design for many years now, and it's hard to even just call the M3 a CPU. I just like calling it a processor because their efficiency cores, their CPU cores, their very capable GPU cores, and moreover with Apple, they have a huge focus on their neural engine, which now has much more wrapped around it to really pull even more performance for developers and applications out of it. So I wanna go over some of the high level stuff that we know about the M3, and then also take a closer look at the M3's AI capabilities and see what it means for us as AI developers. So the M3 has a number of features that make it ideal for AI workloads and make it better than the M2 and the M1 generation. So first, even on its lowest spec, it has a 16 core neural engine. And this engine, again, is specifically designed for AI tasks. And it can do up to 40 trillion of these operations per second. It's not specifically relus. They're not really necessarily aimed just at transformers. But it's a well-rounded capability that Apple seems to be pretty happy with. The other big thing that Apple has really pushed forward with is, is one, going to a 3 nanometer process with TSMC, which we weren't exactly sure about, but now is confirmed. And their improved unified memory architecture, which basically just means having a bunch of blazing fast HBM right next to the processor itself or baked on package. So it can access this incredibly fast. And we were wondering how much we'd actually be able to access. And it turns out that you can get up to 128 gigabytes of this on the M3 Max. And this was something that was previously only capable on the M sort of ultra series of CPUs that we'd seen come from Apple. And that was a big deal at the time. The M1 Ultra in the Studio Mac that was seen as kind of a, a big step forward. You could run huge LMs. And it's crazy that now we can get this all in a mobile package. And this is really the biggest deal because previously the only reason that this was only in the M1 Studio and the Mac Pro was due to power and thermal requirements. I mean, the only reason the M1 Studio is so big is because of the thermal requirements. Another benefit of going to three nanometer, it means you can get more uh, transistors and elements into a smaller package, but it also means that they produce less heat and the heat they produce is actually more manageable. So the step function here will be wild once we see what the M3 Ultra has to offer, which I would say is probably at least double at 256 gigabytes of uh, HBM3 memory. And one thing that I wanna make a point of is while I was watching this event, I'm pretty sure they teased at least one of these M3 Ultra test benches because they show a bunch of these kind of glowing orange test benches in the lab which to be frank was the spookiest part of the whole event, right? Seeing uh, Tim Cook's new bunker under the Apple UFO. But uh, if you look at this, um, the one on the left is much smaller than the one on the right. And the one on the right also has a $7,000 sub ambient chiller hooked up to it. And something tells me that you, don't, you probably don't need a $7,000 sub ambient chiller uh, that's commonly used by extreme overclockers um, attached to an M3 chip intended to be used in a laptop. Just. Just my thinking, but uh, let me know in the comments if you think that's what that is. And Apple is using AI in a number of ways for their services, uh, even outside of just attracting developers to buy their hardware. So they've improved Siri, they've improved Face ID as well. Uh, they're starting to personalize recommendations in the App Store and Apple Music. These are really basic advancements and they didn't really get into anything about Apple GPT or any of their generative AI efforts internally. We know those are coming and they're probably saving those for the M3 Ultra release. But what's cool is they did lead, and I'll show you some clips, with some announcements that said, yeah, like we want AI developers to use these chips. And I have some tweets about this. There are others that directly reference the whole reason they have more unified memory with the M3 Max being explicitly because they know AI developers will use it. So for platforms like GGML, improvements on that platform, and you know some of the ways that people have actually run Falcom 70B on Apple hardware. 
this is a really, really big deal. Another huge announcement is ML compiler that Apple has put together for their M3 neural engine, which basically gives developers a huge reason to use Apple hardware. Uh, one, because it's cheaper than NVIDIA hardware, you can do it wherever, and basically saying that we'll optimize your software and give you tools right out of the box um, that you can use on our hardware. And Apple is calling this Create ML. And they describe this kind of like as Xcode for AI, so things using things like TensorFlow and PyTorch on Apple Silicon for AI. It's also meant to be kind of a way that you can package this into macOS apps. Uh, this comes on top of rumors that the next version of Xcode will actually have kind of a GitHub Copilot feature baked in, and I would definitely assume that eventually there will be like an Apple AI Copilot for making AI. I'm sure this is coming. But yeah, so they say, um, experience an entirely new way of training machine learning models on your Mac, create ML, takes the complexity out of model training while producing powerful core ML models. And it, what's curious is Microsoft had a product very similar to this um, that, they, that came out like two years ago. And it was a startup they acquired that basically made training ML really easy. Ironically, I used it on an Intel Mac way back in the day. And uh, yeah, the other wild thing, and this also points to the rumors of Apple releasing a dedicated TPU for machine learning, is curiously, although Apple drivers don't support NVIDIA GPUs, this new system apparently will support using an external graphics processing unit with your Mac for even better model training performance. Now, I can't imagine why they would not let you use an NVIDIA GPU here. We'll, be, we'll just have to wait and see. But um, we know that because of George Hotz, uh, using AMD GPUs for this kind of thing is a bit of a pipe dream. Uh, you know, huge companies can manage to develop tooling because they just have the engineering horsepower. But, uh, but yeah, so they mentioned eGPU support, on-device training. So obviously using the M3 engine. Uh, the other cool thing is they have video classifiers because this tool from Microsoft, and I, I hate that I'm forgetting the name, but basically it was a way you could load in images and you could build image classifiers with custom data sets um, kind of graphically. And um, it was basically only an image classifier. You couldn't do any of the other five things that they've listed here. So I think this is an awesome way to get more people involved doing AI stuff and having Apple be the best tool for that is kind of cool. It falls in line with Apple being big in the education space. And the big thing for developers is the Create ML framework. Now, the important thing here is it takes really common ML flows using PyTorch and TensorFlow, um, things with transformers, and it turns it into a Swift framework that works on iOS, iPad, iPadOS, macOS, tvOS, and I bet on Apple Watches as, as well. Uh, so they say programmatically experiment, experiment and automate model creation in Swift scripts or in playgrounds. Um, so the big, big thing here is that um, since Apple Silicon is now unanimous across basically all of Apple's devices, uh, it's now being adapted to Swift, which is how you build iOS apps. And the other huge thing is, this is kind of like what React did for front end design way back in the day but they're create ML components. So now developers can sell components that they can license to other engineers to more quickly use AI on Apple devices. So whether or not we'll see GGML come out as an ML component, um, we'll have to wait and see, but this is really, really cool. And then just like this, um, they parlay into Xcode. So obviously all of this keys into Xcode. The flow here uh, obviously is getting people to start with um, create ML. You start to do more complex things, you end up in Xcode. So this is just incredibly cool. Um, you know, the, the new MacBook Pro, it's cool, sure. Um, I was a little annoyed that in 2023, we still just get a 1080p webcam. But anyway, um, the announcements were really cool. I'm very, very excited to see if and when we get an M3 Ultra. I just cannot wait for that. And yeah, tell me what you guys think in the comments. As always, if you like our content, please like and subscribe. And we'll see you in the next video.